morning folks. It's around 4.30am and I'm standing here in the middle of a forest. With the long winter nights drawn in, I thought to myself, what better time to go for a night hike? To walk up the mountainside under the stars and to hopefully hit the summit in time for sunrise. Now, the mountain I'm doing today, I've done many times before, but I haven't had the luxury of seeing the fantastic views that are supposed to exist at its summit. So I'm hoping today is going to be the day. It's around four degrees here, so it's a little bit chilly, but there's zero wind and the sky is absolutely perfectly clear. Fantastic conditions. So with the weather on my side, but time against me, I better get on and get up this hill. Today's adventure takes me deep into the Trossachs, to a rugged little mountain called Benvenue. The forest was dark and lifeless. As I wound my way along the trails, some of them dry, but others not so much. An eerie place to be under the Trossach's dark skies. Well, that's me just left the forest now and I'm out onto some mountain paths. It's absolutely spectacular here tonight in the Trossachs. The skies are really, really dark because there aren't many towns around, so you can see literally millions of stars. You can see Orion setting the horizon over uh, to my left. And fun fact, if you're um, struggling for directions and you don't know you're north from your south, then look for Orion setting on the horizon and that'll point you towards west. Yeah, I'm making good time. Uh, I think I might get there in time for sunrise, but I better get a move on, I think. Uh, time's running out and I've still got a fair bit to go. Let's get on. I continued following the path through the darkness, with the first faint hints of sunrise starting to glow behind me. I had walked these same steps only a few days earlier. A previous attempt to witness Benvenu's beauty. But my plans were thwarted by the weather. The route up Benvenu from Loch Achri follows a well-defined path most of the way, past a pretty wee waterfall tucked away behind the mountain. There are a couple of sections that involve a little bit of clambering up some rocks, but nothing too scary. What I will say though, is to be careful on these rocks when wet. Some of them are extremely slippery. Other obstacles include the bogs, so some waterproof footwear may well make your day out on the hill a far more pleasant experience. A large cairn marks the transition point onto some steeper, more rugged terrain. The fine drizzle in the air clinging to every available surface. I had reached the southeastern top of Benvenue. My efforts rewarded with an endless shroud of grey. A 
a few days later, I returned, determined to see beyond the mists. Unbelievable. This is what it's all about. What can I say? I'm well chuffed. Three times it's taken me to get this view, but it's most certainly worth it. You can see down behind me here, we've got Loch Achery, the small one closest to me here, and in the distance, the bigger one is Loch Venecher. And the loch I've really been looking forward to see is Loch Catrin, which is the one just down at the foot of the mountain here. In the distance over there, there's a small little rocky outcrop you can see. That's actually Ben Ann. And you can see from this angle that it isn't the summit of the mountain at all. You can see the, the actual summit clearly behind it over in the distance. You've got the larger mountain of uh, Ben Leddy over here, almost a Monroe, not quite, but I've not been up that for a while. Um, I think I might do a video on that soon actually, because it's been a long time since I've been there and it's a nice wee hill. It's absolutely beautiful here just now. The sun's just rising and it's bringing up all the moisture from the glen. You can see it down below, the little whiffs of fog just appearing from nowhere. The views down Loch Catherine from the other side they are absolutely spectacular today. And there's quite an interesting tale about how Loch Catherine got its name. In ancient times it's said down in the glen there was a village and in the village lived some shepherds and foresters. And their only source of water was a small mountain spring up on the side of Benvenue here. Now because it was their only source of water, they had to guard it day and night. One night, a local girl named Catrin was tasked with guarding the spring. Unknown to her, there was a cave up on the mountainside, and inside that cave lived a demon. Now the demon wanted to take the spring for himself. So he approached Catrin in the guise of a handsome young man, with a bowl full of mountain berries. Catrin found the berries irresistible and ate them. She soon fell into a deep slumber as the demon had poisoned the berries with his evil magic. He then destroyed the dam and allowed the water to flow from the spring and flood the glen, creating the loch. It said Catherine awoke several days later. Realising what had happened, she was overcome with grief and threw herself into the loch, and it has forever been known as Loch Catherine. Now I haven't seen any demons up here today. The only demon I know of on Benvenue is the weather. I don't know if I've mentioned it already, but I was here earlier on this week on Monday trying to make this video and the conditions were totally different. Strong winds and lashing rain made for a, a not very good video but an interesting day out. A stark contrast to the weather today. Now Benvenu's Gaelic name is Bain Vinev, which means miniature mountain. Now I can see why it's been called that. It does feel like a larger, one of the Monroe type mountains with its terrain but 
I don't know if I'd call it miniature. It, it does involve quite a bit of walk-in, so yeah. It's, I would say Ben Ann calling that a miniature mountain, yeah, but Ben Venue, it's a bit bigger, it's a bit more involved and it's a longer walk in. It was almost time to head home, but not before visiting the highest point on the mountain, its true summit, just a little distance to the northwest. Here we have it, the true summit of Benvenu. So this is actually its northern top. The southern one I was at earlier is actually a few metres lower. But if you follow the path, then it's most likely going to lead you to the lower one. Now the southern top has arguably the better views, with the grand vistas over Loch Acre and Loch Veneker, and down to this, into the central belt as well. But the northern top gives you good views down to Loch Katrin, and over to the other mountains at Loch Lomond as well. So I think they're both worth visiting on a nice day. One thing I will say about the true summit, on a wet day, these rocks are extremely slippery. I don't know what it is about them, even today actually, they're a little bit moist, but they're so, so slippery. I think it must be the lichen on the, the surface of them or something here. It's like walking on verglass. So yeah, just be careful if you're coming up here and it's wet. Well, that concludes my tour of Benvenu. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, hit subscribe, and I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye for now. Oh, dead leg. Oh.